I didn't need a body. I've never needed a body. Bodies are ugly things, not like voices. Voices are what I've loved ever since I was a child. I've had an infatuation with voices, lovely voices, soft baritones wafting through speakers on long drives home, raspy voices talking of nightmares and mystery through fine sets of headphones. Man, woman, I've never cared. Like I said, the body isn't what matters to me, it's the voice that comes from them. My own vocal cords are far from something to be desired, but that's fine. Believe me, if I had the dulcet voice of my fantasies, I'd never get out of the house. But this isn't so much about myself as it is about you. Oh, you. Mm. You are superb. Heaven's choir is gangrenous with envy when your voice first passed into the air and fell on some other person's lucky, lucky ears. I don't remember how I found your channel, but that day, that night, the next day, I devoured every single solitary video of yours. I listened to your tones and tales, your music and lullabies every night. It was so wonderful and freeing to hear you, the perfect voice. I spent a small fortune on better quality headphones and speakers. I rigged them to the older ones strewn about the house, and your vocal soon became an occasional treat among the cacophony that was my playlist. Then, the main course. Then only after a month after finding you, I only wanted your voice. I heard you in my dreams when my nightmares grew too great. Your voice soothed me in both sleep and waking hours, my alarm clock and my lullaby. You soon became the only reason that I was doing much of anything. I'd listen to your voice at all times, at work, cooking, eating, cleaning, sleeping. I needed you, always. I needed your voice to live. See, that's why you're down here. I worried so much that you'd get hurt or bored, and then I'd never hear anything new from you. So, uh, here you are. My basement isn't finished, but it will be. I, I plan to build you a small studio in the corner. The basement is perfectly soundproofed, so you can do almost anything. I even bought you a new laptop to read and write, with the right blocks in place. I can't have you calling for help, can I? Don't struggle. I don't want you to fall. See, behind you there's a... It's a backup plan, but you don't need to worry about that if you behave. I'm sorry I had to strap you to the chair like this, but I needed you to hear me out. Now just hold still. I'm gonna take off the tape. There we go. See? I was going to go with a gag, but that could have hurt your jaw, so let me show you the- Wait. No, what are you doing? You goddamn idiot! What are you doing? Your screaming is gonna ruin it! You're going to ruin your voice! After all that I've gone through, I can't let you fuck this up. I won't. I tried to cover your lips with my hand, only to feel pinching horrible pain. You bit me. You fucking bit me. You split the skin, you little shit. I knew bodies were worthless. I grapple with my wounded hand for what I needed behind me and bring it forward mid-scream. Two, three, four, five times with the hammer. I can see brain splattered against the gaping wound that was your skull. It wasn't as strong as I thought. I may have overdone it, but it doesn't matter now. Blood and bone fragments coat the hammerhead. Dark red streaks my shirt. Tossing the hammer into the pit behind you, I touch delicately with trembling, bloody fingertips a column of your throat under that dis 
disgustingly firm flesh is my only want. My only need. And you almost fucking destroyed it. I knew I had a plan B for a good reason. I picked up the scalpel on the table beside you and sliced gently long ways down upon the arteries at either side of your throat. The blood spatters gently like fallen tears at the bottom of the pit I've dug. I know that even if you manage to survive the blood loss and brain damage, you'll never be able to speak again, let alone scream at me. That's okay, though, really. I didn't need a body. I've never needed a body. Bodies are ugly things, not like voices. Voices are what I've loved. Your voice is what I've loved. I have everything you put out, and it's plain right now. Laying in bed, hand closed with crude stitches, I smile at what is now forever mine. Sitting on the shelf across from my bed, sitting perfectly intact in a perfectly balanced preservation fluid, clear as the day I cooked it up in my garage. Your body is nothing but a desiccated corpse at the bottom of that pit I dug. I threw a hundred or so earthworms on top of you just to help with decomposition. I even thought ahead and threw a dead cat into the dirt about three feet up just in case. I didn't see the need for a proper burial, seeing as bodies are so unnecessary. Because your voice is mine forever. <laughs>